What a disaster, my God. TQL Logistics has to pay overtime for 4,500 employees. Well, in this video, you're gonna see a side of me that you've never seen before because this is disastrous. This is, I mean, the judge should be ashamed of himself for what he did. And I'll tell you a story and I'll explain to you what's happening in a nutshell. You know, you guys can decide for yourself if it's right or if it's wrong. So TQL, huge brokerage company. I mean, same thing with C.H. Robinson, with Transforce, with XPO. These are mega, mega, mega carriers, okay? so. Back in the years of 2008 to 2016, the way that these brokerages survived or the way that these brokerages became who they are today, they used to hire brokers. They used to hire cold callers. They used to hire dispatchers. Now these dispatchers or these cold callers, one of their positions or what they used to do is they used to cold call manufacturing plants. They used to be account reps and these account reps were working from nine to five or you know you can only cold call from nine to five. But these account reps from what I understand in the lawsuit is that they were forced to work 60 hours and then be responsive to their emails 24 7. So I want you to know that in a brokerage firm, I as an account rep, okay, if I'm representing these three or four manufacturing plants, yes, I need to be made available 24 7. But I also know what I signed up for. So here they are, let's say they have, you know, a floor with 100, 150. I mean, it looks like a, you know, the, like the same thing like a stockbroker's back in the day, right? Open floor, you have cold callers calling manufacturing plants, and you have your emails and those emails are are coming in asking you to quote on certain shipments for the account reps the account reps would have dispatchers those dispatchers would get them rates those rates then go back to the account rep so yes people were forced to work over the nine to five now, the reason that I find this ruling just a, a complete joke is because we all know what we sign up for, okay? When these employees of theirs, when they worked for a week or when they worked for two weeks, now it goes a little bit more in detail that only 5% of them would survive and then would be account reps or I don't know exactly how they run their office, but I know that in brokerage, I know that when you are a cold caller, we receive phone calls and we receive emails after hours, okay? Now, yes, probably after 2016 or later in 2000, 2020, there's an after hours team and there's a daytime team, but this is specifically this lawsuit from the years 2008 to 2016, things were a little bit different back then. So yes, you know, what drives me crazy, okay? So you knew what you signed up for and if you didn't like it, then you should just quit. What I don't like happening is that, you know, after your employment or after a year or after two years, now all of a sudden you're going back to the company you're saying, hey, you know, it wasn't right the way that I was working. Well, you know what? It wasn't right the way that I was working when I was 16 years old. I was a server for a freaking restaurant and I used to work double shifts and for every shift they paid me $20. Yes, $20 for a shift when the minimum wage was six or seven dollars an hour. Big deal. I'm not going to go right now and I'm not going to sue them and open a class action lawsuit against them. It made me who I am today. It made me tougher and it made me the person that I am today. What are we teaching these 4,500 employees? First of all, if I'm TQL or if I'm CH Robinson and I'm Transforce, I know that something is now coming my way because all the brokerage companies used to do the exact same thing. But take one step further and say, okay, if I'm getting now this huge fine slapped against me where I have to now pay, back pay, overtime, plus now they want a penalty on top of that, guess what? I'm taking my 4,500 positions and I'm not gonna be working in the US anymore because if I'm TQL or if I'm CH Robinson and I'm Transforce, why the f do I need to put up with this bullshit in the US when I could just take my jobs elsewhere? I don't know, Honduras, Serbia, freaking uh, Albania. I, I know for years and years that Landstar has offices in Ukraine. And I know for years that, you know, this offshore dispatching or, you know, recruiting office employees, you know, in different places in other countries that don't have these crazy labor laws, right? Just look what's going to happen four, five, 10 years down the road. I mean, your kids are going to be unemployed because of these lawsuits, because of these rulings. That's why your kids and your grandchildren are going to be unemployed. Who the hell wants to deal with this? I mean, if you ask me today, if I'm going to hire somebody here in Canada or in the US, or do I hire, you know, somebody from offshore and not deal with all these labor laws and these ridiculous labor laws? Okay. Now, a lot of you are not going to agree with me, but my, my, my theory behind it is this. If you're at a job and you don't like the job and you think that you're not fairly getting compensated for the job, then quit or find another job. Okay. This I don't like seeing happening. Or for example, if you see that you're working, you're, you're getting paid for a full-time position and you're getting paid for 40 hours, but you're actually working 50 or 60 hours, bring it to your boss's attention and tell him, listen, I don't want to work like this. This is not normal. I signed up for a nine to five job. I'm leaving at five o'clock. 
okay and if they have a problem with that then you know find another job that's more suitable for you there are jobs out there that are a lot more demanding and they you know require you to work evenings or weekends and be attached to your phone right so the way that we do it here is we actually have the base rate and then the after hours rate so we know that account reps and we've gotten into trouble here you know in the past also for almost the exact same thing well you know what but that situation there made me smarter what it did is that now when i have new dispatchers working you have your base rate and then you have have your evenings and weekends rate so let's say you're hired for eighty thousand dollars then that eighty thousand dollars gets broken up into two you have your sixty thousand dollar base and then you have your twenty thousand dollars that covers your evenings weekends and whatever else you know dispatchers are required to do after hours if you think about it you know all these companies are going to look at this ruling and it's not a good thing for anybody these 4500 employees that are going to receive right now checks what does that teach them that teaches them that if they're in a different position or if they're working for another carrier or if they're working for another brokerage firm you know everything that they're going to do after hours they're going to document everything that they're going to do evenings or weekends they're going to document and then they're going to send them the bill at their end of their employment which is really not fair if you're not happy with your work say something call them out on it and try to come up with a solution with your superiors to do this to a company that has done so much okay has employed so many people out there okay this is a load of shit. this is this is nonsense that's what it is and if you're that employee that's working 60 hours evenings and weekends you know what i feel for you i really do feel for you but you got to bring it up to your boss's attention and you got to let them know that you know hey i'm being compensated 35 or forty thousand dollars, and i'm really putting in 60 hours you know and, and and i as your superior i would say okay listen let's reevaluate your salary right or let's do something about it or i would tell you listen you know that it is what it is and tql had probably hundreds of people right well 4500 people <laughs> that were in the situation but they probably have an open floor with hundreds of people working working there and that is the norm and that is what you signed up to anyways if we don't do something about it collectively guys i don't know where we're gonna be in 20 30 years we're already losing a lot to china they are 20 steps ahead of us and now this okay this is going to make us lose a lot more they might think that it's a victory right now but this victory is actually a huge loss okay it's a huge loss for everybody in our industry and i think that tql should do everything in their power to do something against this okay because this is just not right and it's not right because the people knew what they signed up for and if they had a problem with it then they should have just gotten up and leave or find themselves another position that's more suitable for them guys this is my opinion. A lot of you may have a difference of opinion, so leave the comments down below. We can respectively communicate and share opinions on this channel. There's no need for the F this and the F that, even though honestly, this topic blew me up. It really triggered me the wrong way because I hate to see stuff like this happen because I see the trickle down effect of what's going to happen to these other huge brokerages. And I hate, I would hate to see that so many jobs are going to be lost over this here in the US. And yes, it's going to be because of this. And this is going to be this is going to set a new precedent within our industry all right guys hopefully you saw a side of me that you like i'm ronan and i'll catch you in my next video bye <laughs>